against all the mercenaries two brothers can hire. All the weapons Manco can produce. They will send them to you. Only them. Shoot and stab until it is done. Pyros are great at detecting spies, with very little effort. Their flamethrower covers a large area near them, and it only takes one of those particles to set you on fire. Once you have been set on fire, not only will your health drain, but the effect is visible to other players, instantly revealing your disguise and making you visible while cloaked. Of course, once the pyro knows your location, they can track you down and kill you incredibly fast with the sustained and easy to aim damage of the flamethrower and your low health. Since most of your kills are the result of backstabs, you find yourself getting very close to the enemy, and that's where the effective range of the pyro lies. Not to mention, he possesses unlockable weapons that can set you on fire from a distance, or help close at distance. So when it comes to dealing with pyros, one of your biggest priorities will be... In order to survive against a pyro, we need to learn how to avoid them, and how to get away in the case you do get discovered. Since the flamethrower is almost always the way you'll get discovered by a pyro, it's especially important to avoid it. A good way of avoiding it is to learn about the danger zone. The danger zone is in an imaginary circle around the pyro, that roughly gauges the range of its flamethrower. If you are in the danger zone, you're one quick spy chick away from being discovered. But if you're outside the danger zone, you literally cannot be set on fire. I meant by the flamethrower. Getting used to the size of the danger zone comes down to experience, but it's worth noting that the danger zone lags behind the pyro's own movement. Because the flame particles aren't affected by the pyro's speed, it actually has slightly less range in the direction they're moving. And the reverse is also true. Also the flamethrower, like most weapons in TF2, has a distinct noise. So put on some surround headphones and keep your ears open, as you can often hear a spy check coming before you even see it. In fact, pyros that spy check too much can often be inadvertently easier to avoid due to you always being able to hear them. Another part of avoiding pyros is... Hey, I'm a pyromane watching this video so I can kill spies better. Predicting them. As mentioned before, being able to hear a pyro before you see them is a good way of avoiding them but it also helps you gauge how spy check happy the pyro is. Try to find paths that the pyro isn't covering and simply stay out of the danger zone. Pyros tend to have habits of places they spy check and the order that they do so. Understanding those patterns can allow you to slip past. But of course, most pyros aren't that dedicated to killing spies as they have other purposes as well. Like ambushing, deflecting projectiles, protecting teammates, getting crit boosted and going on rampages, air blasting people off cliffs, you know, pyro stuff. It doesn't mean they won't spy check, they'll just do it opportunistically, usually when they're not doing anything else. The danger zone rule applies to these pyros as well, but you can still more easily get away with being in the danger zone as long as you're aware of what the pyro is currently trying to do. It's essentially the same deal of avoiding the crossfire of other classes. Only difference is that they may accidentally set you on fire. Oh yeah, about that. So in the case you are set on fire, 
immediately assume you've been discovered, and start running. The main way to get away from pyros is what I call the three-step plan. One, run away. Two, get rid of afterburn. And three, lose them. When running, face away from the pyro. You are slightly faster than the pyro, but running backwards slows you down just enough to make the pyro faster than you. And besides, like I said before, the flamethrower is loud, so you'll have a good idea of where the pyro resides relative to you anyway. Once you are out of flamethrower range, the two best ways to get rid of afterburn quickly is by picking up a health pack or cloaking. Picking up a health pack gets rid of afterburn instantly, and if you watch the spy psychology on cloak, you'd know that being cloaked makes afterburn wear off twice as fast. As a side note, you can get rid of afterburn by jumping into water, but it does temporarily make you wet, and the subtle dripping effect from it may reveal your position while cloaked, though not all players notice this. Once the afterburn is gone, you can lose the pyro by either moving so incredibly erratically that they lose track of you, or continuing to make more distance. Since you're no longer on fire, they can't see where you went while cloaked. If you go with the first method, it's advised to instantly change the direction you're moving after you get rid of the afterburn to throw them off. Breaking line of sight with the pyro as quickly as possible helps ensure they won't set you on fire again. If they do manage to set you on fire again, restart from step one. Once the pyro loses track of you, make as much distance as you can as it will buy you time until they've realized you've got away. If you go with the method of simply making distance, continue using your superior speed to get away and be prepared to dodge potential flares. It's often a good idea to run straight into your own team, especially a friendly engineer nest, as it's known that pirates have some... difficulties with sentries. If your team is really close by, you can even skip the first two steps when being discovered and go right to step three. Well, most of the time when trying to kill a spy, pyros won't use ear blast because it kind of, uh, helps them get away. Just be very wary of cliffs. The pyro often chooses violence, but at times, so will you. Spy has a gun! The gun is a very good option against pyros when you are outside of the danger zone, and shooting the pyro takes advantage of their biggest weakness. Range. Yes, while they can't hit you with the flamethrower, they can hit you with flares or shotguns at long range. But flares are projectiles that can be dodged, and while the shotgun is hitscan, it consists of a spread of multiple pellets that suffer from damage falloff, while the revolver is a single shot that suffers much less from said falloff. The point being, the further you are from the pyro, the bigger of an advantage you have against them, as your ranged options are superior to theirs. Speaking of another thing you can do about the flames, that one knife. You know the one. While it was mentioned in the knives video about how it helps you getting away from pyros, the one second of full fire immunity can also help you in combat as the pyro literally cannot damage you for one second as you pump him full of close range lead. Of course, you do need to actually hit your shots in this situation, or else you'll join your knife in being melted. However, the spicicle isn't the only knife that has value in combat, as you can, um, uh, uh, trick stab. When you're in the danger zone and the pyro has too much health to gun down, landing a trick stab can save your life. Pyros like to run into you, but that also means they can run into trick stabs. Though this video also isn't a trick stab tutorial, if you've got no other option, it works as a last resort, even if you just throw yourself at the pyro and hope you land a stab in the confusion. But note that trick stabs are inconsistent, as you may mess up the execution of one, and if the pyro sees it coming, they can just simply not walk into the stab. Pyros that think they got the jump on you can often be surprised by a quick reaction on your part, or by mixing the usage of your gun with your knife. If the pyro's health falls below 41, and you're struggling to hit the final shot, you can run at them and finish them off with a butter knife. So when fighting a pyro, 
make full use of your arsenal. But it's about time we talk about theirs. The back burner simply deals critical hits if hit from behind, so the strategy of turning and running away from before is ill-advised in the danger zone of a backburner pyro, though it can be safely used once you make some distance. The backburner does have a slightly different sound to the stock flamethrower, but if you're caught off guard and die to the backburner, take note of the pyro using it for next time. The main draw of this flamethrower is its faster switch speed, so pyros who use it are more likely to use their other weapons in combat. So if you know a pyro is using this flamethrower, you should expect this. The Flog cannot air blast. And because Flog Pyros are generally trying to build their oomph meter by doing as much flame damage as possible, they will very often run at you, typically making it much easier to bait them. However, if the Flog Pyro has crits, the danger zone becomes the DEATH ZONE. If you find yourself in the death zone, just accept your fate. The Dragon's Fury has the potential to be an absolute beast in combat. In terms of spy checking, eh... So with the Dragon's Fury, the danger zone no longer okay. exists. Well, yes, the Dragon's Fury boasts superior range, it uses single shot projectiles and not a spray of smaller ones meaning the pyro can't just roughly guess your location, they have to correctly guess your exact position to find you. And even if they do hit you, the afterburn only lasts two and a half seconds, which lasts half that if you're cloaked. So yeah, it's the worst flamethrower for spy checking, and most pyros using it will usually only go after you if they know where you are. The flare guns are the only way a pyro can set you on fire outside of the danger zone but they actually have to hit you with it, meaning it's not nearly as effective for spy checking. If they're using the base flare gun, avoid getting hit by it while on fire at all costs, since it crits burning targets. If you get hit by the first shot, get rid of that afterburn ASAP. If they're using the scorch shot, be slightly wary of the small explosion that can set you on fire. If they're using the detonator, all they can really do is set you on fire, and the man melter, you almost never really come up against it, so... Yeah. The Thermal Thruster can be great for closing distances. However, it takes a long time to switch to it, launch, then switch back to the Flamethrower. I mean, look at this. This gives you plenty of time to change directions and lose the Pyros while they prepare to chase with the jetpack. It's also not very effective indoors. Okay, I'm with the pyros on this one. This weapon just sucks outside of Man vs. Machine, where, uh... That happens. But as a spy, just avoid the gas cloud and you'll be fine. This melee is typically used for close-range combos. Pyros like to pair this with the before-mentioned degreaser due to the faster switch speed. So a pyro using that flamethrower and engaging you at close range has a pretty good chance of having it equipped. Saving that for a different video. Okay, so you know that thing where you can jump in water and get rid of afterburn? Well, uh... Yeah. Fortunately, pyros only tend to use it in maps that have a good chunk of water, and aren't very good at hiding the fact that they have it. And with that, that's your guide to dealing with pyros as spy. These tips are by no means foolproof, and you will still die to pyros, but it's a matchup that isn't entirely out of your control. Whether you're simply avoiding them, or experiencing the catharsis of fighting back, but now, it's about time we play that song a lot of you have been waiting for.
Oh, touching the sentry. Oh, it just... <laughs> Delete.